you know, your business fits into the profile of C15. And so with no further ado, um, I would invite Lorena Connor to come and bring us, you know, her commentary. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Um, everybody, good evening, Bahamas. I'm, I don't know if everybody's from the Bahamas, but I'm really happy to see such a big turnout. So great um, to have you all here. So yes, as Sumaya Ms. Cargill said, I am the general manager of C15 Studios. C15 Studios is a financing solutions company um, based out of Trinidad and Tobago, but operating across the Caribbean region. And um, we are a subsidiary of Aspire Fund Management, which is a fund, uh, an investment company in Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, they believe in the orange economy on um, the creative sector and they wanted to develop a fund specifically addressing the needs of the creative sectors so um c15 how do we approach funding is we do it through um three ways basically one what we call trade financing is a product we call accelerate so it's to accelerate your cash flow and that basically is based on receivables that you have or commitments, confirmed commitments that you have in hand, we would advance funds against that. And actually we'll talk with uh, Mr. Moody this evening who um, went through the process with us and has actually um, successfully done th that, that operation twice with us, you know, and we're looking to work with him more as we are growing. And then we have the equity investment side of things where we actually now um, look at your company valuations and so on. And in terms of what the what you want to develop and we look at investing and bringing, you know, a, a equity investment into your company, which gives us, of course, a percentage of your company. And that um, we also have an example here this evening with Sebastian Bass, um, who is the founder and creator of the Hideout Clothing. And he will talk to you all a bit about his clothing brand and why he saw the need for to bring on an investor, um, because that is also you know a decision that has to be made at your level as an entrepreneur if you want you know, capital investment or not. And then the third form of support we do, it would be in the form of loan or debt financing, um, which is, you know, more the, the group that focuses on that. We really focus more on um, the first two I mentioned, which is the equity investment and what we call accelerate. So, we the comp we are really looking at the creative sectors. We've opened it up to fifteen sectors. We've identified that's why C fifteen, and we've added sports to that as well. So we're going into sixteen, and I mean the number is not limited, but it just gave us a framework to start working with. So you know you can go on our website c15studios.com and you'll get the list of of the sectors, and of course we have um information there. And I know that BDB are going to take us through where their website, where they have the application form and so on. So I'm going to leave that part to them. Um, what are we looking for in terms of companies? You know, uh, not necessarily, we, we shy away a bit from the startup startup because we want you to have some experience already in the field uh, that you're in. Um, but we can flex on that because depending on the, the sector, you know, you may you may be very proficient in a certain sector and then this is the first time you're trying something else but you still have a lot of experience so we may not necessarily consider you a startup so you know I always would encourage people to apply or at least inquire um, to find out if they are eligible and suitable and we also look for people who have individuality who um, believes in their product or their service and has that drive, the entrepreneur drive. And that's what, um, you know, both actually Zamani, Mr. Moody and Mr. Jibia, I'll call them by their first names, it's easier, Zamani and Bas, both of them have that drive and that desire to really create a space in their respective fields. And that is something we look for and admire. You know, we can't want your business to succeed more than you can. You have to really show us that you want to make that success and to be successful. And then we feel confident then to support you and partner with you. So that's a nutshell, you know, of what it is. And of course, we'll talk more in depth this evening and I know they're gonna open up the questions and so on. Um, we're really thrilled to have the opportunity to work across the region and to build out this partnership with the Bahamas Development Bank. Really excited. Bahamas is, it, it's like, you know, when 
because I've started working with Bahamas, Bahamas has started popping up like every other day there's something happening in the Bahamas in my sphere. So, you know, I love that you all are so active and, you know, you all are really um, working, working the different fields and, you know, tourism is big for you all, I know, but there's also so many other areas in the Bahamas. So, Congrats to the whole nation, and I'm happy to have you all on this evening and really excited to share um, our two guests, you know, stories with you all. So that's, I think I'll stop there for now and, and toss it back to BDB. Thank you so much for that, Lorraine. Um, I'm sure that everyone is buzzing with questions, but just give us a few minutes. BDB would like to walk you through our application platform, just so that you know if you do want to make an application, how you go about that. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to our managing director, Mr. Nicholas Higgs. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Just I'll add some more information as well. And so the C15 fund, as you know, hits the orange economy, and that has a very wide ranging net. And so with the Bahamas Development Bank, what we're doing is we built a relationship with C15 to help provide access to Bahamians to get this type of funding through the C15. And so we'll make sure that you are, once you send in your information, we'll make sure you're prepared. And once we send it to them, they'll take a much closer and faster look at you. And so we're just trying to provide better opportunities for entrepreneurs. And the C15 Studios is the first one we have launched. And we're hoping over the, uh, over the next year, we will launch more and maybe other sectors, maybe smaller amounts or maybe even larger amounts. You know, um, a C15 Studios parent, Aspire, does larger amounts. And so we, uh, you're talking Portland Equity Fund, which even higher amounts. And so we just want to provide more opportunities to entrepreneurs in the Bahamas. And so just to quickly go through it, this is the uh, Bahamas Development Bank's website. And so you will go, you'll find this right at our work. And then right here at the C15 Fund. And so um, this is where I'm on the page already. It was easier because my Wi-Fi is not the best right now. But C15 is right there, go to our listing, and you'll see it. And then you come down, you apply now. And so it lets you know all the information you need. So C15 is looking at your pitch deck and business plan. So, But the pitch deck, they'll look at first to decide if they're interested in, and then they request a business plan. So obviously, you should have both ready. If you have a full-fledged business plan, it's not very difficult to convert that into a pitch deck. But to have all of the information, this is very similar to what BDB is looking for for our direct loans to you. It also is very similar to a lot of other uh, in lending institutions. And to the right, we have information just on C15 Studios, uh, a pitch tech template just to help persons with a standard. And I think the conversation with the guest speakers as well will provide more context to how they fill up their template, how they uh, ensure their information is right, and uh, how much rounds of conversations that they have to have. To have. And um, so once you click apply now, it immediately goes to this page. And via this, you will just see the general information here. And then you apply, sign in, and then it will show up to this page. And with this page, you will see a slew of questions here that you have to ask. A lot of this information is not difficult to answer. And so you're just adding your support and information. And with that, then you will submit the information. So we tried to make sure this was the smoothest and easiest process you can find. And so this is random. This is C15 Studios page. Just wanted to show a few of the areas thought that would be nice. So all these areas are covered under it. And these are opportunities that any Bohemian, any island can enjoy. And so just going through it, the and everyone here most likely is in some form in the orange economy, whether they want to get into it, or they're currently into it, or they know someone into it, you'll find that these areas are very difficult to find, like talking theater arts, this is very difficult. And so these are the areas you want to provide the opportunities for. And so that is the clear process of how BDB handles taking on your documentation. Now, once you submit the documentation to us, we'll most likely, I think the plan was five day turnaround. I think we're trying to get it down to two to three days, but we're currently at five days before BDB itself will reach back out to you. And then we'll have a slew of questions. We have conversations, see if we should adjust, see if you fit, because there's a chance you don't fit under the C15 Studios guidelines. So your program, your plan would not go to the C15 Studios. And so we just want to make sure you have the highest chance. And um, after it goes to us, you have the conversations with us and we approve, it then goes to C15 for their process. And so it's a very simple process. Just again, go to our website, BahamasFellowingBank.com, go right to our work right here and C15 Studios. It will show you this page. You just apply, 
it'll most likely ask you to sign in. Yeah, so you have to create an account for submit.com and then you go here and um, you just submit the information. Simple as that, very clear. And um, again, thank you all for coming. We see a large list of persons in the, in the chat. Also, just a quick shout out to our team. I see a good amount of our BDB staff here. We are so grateful for you to be here. And so I know that means any questions we see here today, we'll provide them better input so tomorrow we can make sure strategize even better if we need to. So thank you, everybody. Back to you, Sumaya. Okay, thank you so much for that, MD. Um, I think that many of you may have already seen our, our um, application portal um, because you would apply for the Creative Economy grant that we did. Uh, it's exactly the same. And if you have already applied for the grant, then you already have an account with us. And it's just a question of signing in and filling out this new form and, these, and submitting the documentation. At this point, and you can see that we're, going, we're moving through the talking heads portion of this really quickly because we want to get to you know the real meat, people who have actually accessed this funding and hearing those stories. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Lorraine, who is going to introduce our very interesting, very dynamic speakers for the evening. Back to you, Lorraine. Thank you, and thank you, um, Nicholas, for that, for showing people how it works. It really is very simple, and we look forward to many applications coming in. So I'm going to start with um, Zamani, actually. Um, <laughs> and so I'm going to say a little bit about his bio. Zamani is a versatile trade and business development expert with 15 years combined experience in small business development, trade and export promotion market intelligence and economic research. Actually, he was currently employed at the Caribbean Development Bank and as an officer with responsibility for the development of micro, small and medium sized enterprises. Um, he held the position of advisor for market intelligence and export development at Caribbean Export Development Agency for seven years, focusing on regional private sector development and promoting regional exports in international markets. And of course, building trade information networks across the region. So um, he is a successful business owner and co-founder of the Barbados-based Twisted Entertainment. He has a Bachelor of Science in Economics and Statistics and a Master of Science in Economics with focus on international trade from the University of the West Indies. So welcome, Zamani. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us this afternoon and, um, you know, to share your story. Also, I know in the Caribbean, we tend to not really want to share our stories so much, but I think it's important that we do because, um, you know, you have a great example. So Zamani is in the entity entertainment sector also he's um well tell us Zamani you've left your 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 day job to be full-time in the sector that's a big move hey good afternoon good afternoon everyone uh thank you very for that introduction uh yes it's a big move but it's also a very scary it can be a very scary move but thanks to organizations such as c15 it provides a companionship through this process and makes it a little bit easier to have some form of security. But yes, my background is in trade. I've been doing trade you now for the last over 20 years. I may look a bit younger, but yeah, over 20 years, because before I was at uh, CARICOM secretary doing the same thing. And uh, actually started a company, Twisted Entertainment, 12 years now in Barbados, where we actually execute a Tipsy Music Festival. I'm not sure how many people in the chat will know about Tipsy Music Festival, but we also were the main partners for the Burner Boy concerts in Barbados, Trinidad, Jamaica, and Miami. Mm -hmm. right? so, and we, we have done a number of initiatives, actually. I've just signed a contract to take over NSC Artistry in Barbados and quite possibly the future in, in, in Bahamas. So we've done a lot of work, as Lorraine just said. What I've found is that we have always, over the last 12 years, been limited by access to finance. And as such, there is always this need for entertainers or people in the entertainment industry to have a second job or an anchor just in case, right? And even in my in my normal job at, 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 at CDB, what I've realized is that that's the main inhibitor for growth and success for most for most uh msmes sometimes even when they do have 
when it's not necessarily the primary inhibitor, the fact that that is hovering over the lack of access to finance, lack of opportunities, it provides a glass ceiling for most uh, firms, most businesses in the creative sector. And thanks to an organization, organization such as C15, it does not remove the constraints, but it makes it a bit easier to understand, to know that there is an institution such as C15 who understands the creative industry because Lorena herself, I know, is involved in the creative industry, who understands the creative industry and is and is willing and able to take the risk with this with 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 with, with, Patriot, with uh, firms in this sector and even working in the era of development banking, even at CDB or before Carbon Export, we have tried. We've engaged a number of institutions, and it's very good to see Development Bank in Bahamas that they are taking this step to partner with the private sector to make it easier for us to access finance for the creative sector. Because I know we have tried um, significant, extended significant effort just to. Oh, thanks very much. Someone said that they have been to my party. I know. I'm seeing that. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. So they have. They have so yes, we have tried significantly, but banks are just unwilling to lend. No matter how successful you are, they're unwilling to take the risk. And sometimes it's not necessarily unwilling. It is that they don't really understand the sector. They don't understand that or collateral or the ability, to, the lack of collateralization of the of movable assets or, 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 or of, 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 in this case, of, of C15 has been moving to certain assets that we would have in the creative sector, such as tickets, for example, cash flow is not, it limits us from accessing funding in, in, in the traditional financial institutions. And what I've, what, I've, what I've been most excited about the C15 experience is that they have tried to venture outside the box to find new means of, of collateralizing our, 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 our product, which is very good because I know even currently, we're, well, I said currently, I know I'll soon, not, I'll soon I'll not be at CDB anymore, but we have a number of initiatives where we are looking at how to collateralize uh, the creative sector. Through SIF, through a number of other initiatives, we have been trying to figure out how to collateralize the creative sector to make it easier to access funding. So it's good to see that C15 is taking that initiative and, and above the uh, uh, and beyond the curve so we can follow C15. Because uh, I'd like for more institutions, such as uh, Development Bank in Barbados, to look at what C15 is doing and see how we can use this to be a model to extend not only to the creative sector, but in other sectors with disadvantaged groups, such as women or, or youth or, or people with disability or indigenous population, whatever it is, this model of looking outside the box for collateral is very, very useful for uh, increasing access to finance for small business. So I think I've said enough and I'm sure I'll have more to say, but thank you very much. Thanks, Zamani. Well, actually, what I would like is for to explain a little bit to the, the guests, the people who are listening in, um, what the process is. So Zamani used our product for the accelerate the cash flow. So what do we do to for that to work? Is um really he he came with uh commitments from sponsors so we did two events with him we did the the Bernard boy in from the event in miami and the event in trinidad so he came with commitments from sponsors and basically based on these commitments from sponsors signed sponsorship agreements we were able to advance him money we also advanced money against the ticket sales because remember you a lot of these sales are done online so you would have an account you would see how much tickets are being sold so we were able to use those two methods to back his, you know, requests. And Zamani, tell, um, if you could just let us know, you know, how the process was, uh, you know, how, how did it in time, was it in time, were you, was it able to support the event and so on? To be, to be, to be, to be honest, um, um, it's very difficult for me to comment on the process because it was so easy because he, he did most of the work for us, to be honest. We applied, and we we basically fill, uh, provided some basic information to 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 Lorraine and Carlan, and they actually helped us significantly in preparing the application process. Which is it's very very which is normally a very tedious process, but it's very very simple for us. It's very timely, and it's very flexible. So I'm not even as familiar with the process because there was so much help to us, to be honest. But we know that we had to provide ticket sales, uh, sponsorship tickets, 
uh, background, basic background information on the company, and they were able to create a, a case for us for lending for us on a payment term. So it's very flexible. It's very much on time. It's exactly what we need. I have zero complaints about the process, the payback terms, and how easy it is for us in the creative sector. May I say one thing as well, Larry? And I know it's what you're doing now in the creative sector is something that banks are currently doing for other sectors, but not the creative sector, which is factoring. Straight finance is factoring. Almost every development bank have bank a model, but it's a model for farmers, for small businesses. Reverse factor is the money that they are using for the hotel industry, tourism industry, but nobody did it for the creative industry. So once again, thanks to C15 that this has been done for the creative sector. So it's a money which has been tested, but never for the creative sector. Yeah, and that is a good point. And I have to say, you know, thanks to our visionary, because when I took actually the lead here in 21, um, the main goal, of course, was the investment side of it, but the team behind me was like, well, we need to start generating operating income, you know, oper uh, money, you know, money, because of course, we know when you invest, it takes usually three to five years before you get a return on that money. So how are we managing in the time being? And that's when Co and Valley, um, the brainchild behind this actually Kate said, well, why don't we apply factoring why don't we try the factoring model to the creative sector nobody's done it let's do it so we are really pioneering here and Zamani is pioneering with us because he is one of the very early ones who started with us and as I say now we're on to our third you know opportunity together and really looking forward to building and this is important also for us we don't want to do one-off so we really want to work with our clients and, and develop with them. We are growing, we are learning the space and they are growing and learning the space. The Caribbean landscape, as we know, is very young, very new, lots to do here. So, you know, we, we are not in this for short term. Basically, we are in this for the long term and we thank you, Zamani, for, you know, um, really giving us that that thumbs up and, you know, and understanding the process and working closely with us. And we discussed with you, like, because you all must be wondering, like, well, how long after the event did he have to pay back and so on? Those are all things that we are flexible and can discuss. So nothing is um like hard and fast, one size fits all. Not at all. We are all about the bespoke model, meaning adapting it to your organization, your, not just the organization, to the specific project, because, you know, um, artists, Hennessy artistry might be a different model than a, just a one-off concert. So, you know, we would adapt to the model that is being, you know, um, financed. So that's great. So thank you, Zamani. I don't know if you want to add anything, but if not, I'll move on to Sebastian and then maybe we can open for questions. You did there? Okay, good. So now I want to bring on our next guest. So this is Sebastian Gibe. So Sebastian is a global citizen. He was born in Trinidad, mother of Corsican, Irish and Venezuelan descent and a French father. He was actually, no, he was born to a Trinidadian mother in Nice, France. So he's French Trini and um, he's traveled around the world. He's grown up in a multiracial household with his Afro-Trinidadian stepfather and siblings, which also helped influence his identification with Black Island culture. He's a learner. He graduated with a marketing degree with honors at um, FIU in Miami. Um, Bass is always on the move with marketing and sales road trips, and he is uh, continuous education in the trenches. <laughs> the Hideout Clothing, THC, is a streetwear brand that exudes contemporized gritty attitude emanating from the Caribbean ecosystem. It was launched in 2018 in Trinidad and Tobago, and the brand sits in the space where inner city youth culture and international streetwear intersect. THC leverages the multicultural makeup of the islands to design men's wear that's different, elevational, cool, and vibrant. THC creates fashion with potent references to urban island ghetto youth culture rooted in stories that reverberate globally. Since its first drop, THC has amassed a loyal client base in the US among millennials, Gen Z, dancehall and rap enthusiasts. The brand feeds demand for streetwear with thought provoking, edgy aesthetics and authentic Caribbean feels. As an emerging streetwear label, THC has carved out a global 
community of believers in its offering, cultivating a host of multi-talented creatives from artists and filmmakers to musicians and producers who all stimulate the brand's family essence. So Sebastian, why did you choose to be an entrepreneur? That I, that's a lot of people are scared of that choice. You went straight there. You didn't try another field. <laughs> so, well, first of all, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I would say I didn't really choose to be an entrepreneur. It kind of like came to me. I guess both of my parents were entrepreneurs. Um, and it seemed pretty natural to me. Ever since young, I always liked to, quote unquote, hustle, you know, do my little things, do my little, I guess, businesses, sell stuff, buy stuff. Um, I never actively stopped and was like, I want to be an entrepreneur. It seemed like just like a progression of different avenues to make money. And eventually I put the word to what I was doing which was being an entrepreneur, if that makes sense. Um, I know that might not be the typical storyline, but that's how it worked out for me. Mm -hmm. And um, did you have, so uh, just to re back up a little bit, just so the audience understands. So Sebastian has a fashion brand, I guess that's what you all understood from me reading the bio. And so C15 has invested in this brand. So what made you decide, Sebastian, to look for an investor? Um, so initially I think it came, it sparked with an idea. So the, the idea was how can we, take our brand to the next level, basically. Um, and just by circumstance of different events, I ended up in Paris. And through my network and my a lot of my dad's network as well, my parents' network, um, my family, extended family, I met different players, different people within the fashion industry. And slowly by slowly, the idea crept into my head to open a flagship store in Paris, which is, if not, it is, if not the um, capital of fashion, it's one of the, the capitals of fashion, to open a flagship store there to really bring the identity of our brand in a physical space and in, into the real world, you know? So the first thing started with the idea. And then when we started putting, I guess, budgets together and looking at, can we do this on our own, we realized that it reached a point where we would probably need to bring in investors if we want to go to that next level and go beyond where we are right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So somebody just asked me, so it's the hideoutclothing.com. Um, mm -hmm. You can check it out on Instagram and on, they have their own website. And so Sebastian started um, in Trinidad and Tobago, and then they moved in, they went into the US market which this, you know, tell us a little bit about this story there. How did you even decide? Because some people are just, I mean, and the Bahamas is close to the US, but some people yeah. may still may be intimidated by even hitting the US. Um, so yeah, so we started in Trini. Um, and well, we quickly realized that, I guess having our own brand, our own designs and everything, the market in Trinidad is a bit small. Um, we did attend a lot of, well, not a lot, but a few trade shows in the US before actually um, starting to design our own brand. Because we used to have stores in Trini that used to, were multi-brand stores that sold other brands, right? So we had a bit of familiarity with going to these trade shows, seeing how it works. So, and then we started to pick up a small passion for designing ourselves. We really didn't know anything about anything. So we really started, like, we learned it as we went along. Um, and then we attended a trade show thinking we were going to do really well and we did not do good. We did not get much orders as much as we liked and we had already paid for production, a production run. So we we're like, okay, we need to try and sell this stuff. So we flew to the state, well, to Florida, Miami. Um, we literally rented a car and drove store to store, state to state, introducing ourselves, introducing our brand, introducing, showing the samples, um, showing line sheets. I mean, on all these terminology, we didn't even know it at the time what we were doing. But yeah, so that's basically what 
started the development of the brand and building those wholesale relationships and getting us into um, like different stores within different doors within the US. So I think that that real like grassroots bootstrapping old school, going and visit potential buyers is what really started the brand to gain some momentum. Um, we, we, we didn't do it like completely crazy. Like we made a, a compiler list of stores that we liked, um, research their addresses, research if we can find like the buyer's name and stuff like that. So it wasn't just like completely like not making any sense. Like it, we, we had it planned out, we had the route planned out, but it, it was, um, I think it was fun now that I look back on it, <laughs> but it was challenging, obviously. You get a lot of rejections because you're basically unknown, um, but you, you do pick up some people who will give you a chance, you know what I mean? That's what we really wanted. And that's how we started acquiring orders, sell through one collection, did the same thing. We did it for a few collections, I would say for like a year and a half, maybe two years of just constantly visiting potential buyers stores and really focusing on the US market just because it's so vast. Right, so the, um, let's come back to the process about looking for the investor. So when you thought, okay, I'm going to, we need investment. Um, well, obviously you probably heard about C15 in Trinidad uh, at the time and you approached them and what did, what did you have to submit? What did they ask for? How was that process? How long did it take? So on. Well, I think, I think before you even submitting anything to C15, um, first have like a good idea. You know what I mean? Like come, like really narrow down exactly what you want to do. So first thing we did is we built a, a really, really good pitch deck. Well, it was not that good at start, but we <laughs> kept working on it. Worked on like We worked on it for a long time, like st like a couple of months. Yeah, um, tell them because it, I want people to understand. Like day, day in and day out. And it, I mean, we, Regardless whether you want an investor or not, or looking for funds, I think it's the value in doing a pitch deck is that it gets you really thinking about what it is that your project is going to achieve or, or what you want your project to do or, or everything that it entails. And doing the pitch deck and those things, you definitely start a brainstorm and realize, oh, there's this I forgot to add. Oh, we also need this to add. You know, So it, it gets you flowing within your business as well anyway. So, whether you get investment or not is beneficial. But yeah, so that would be the first thing, like doing a really great pitch deck, getting all your ideas out nice, um, obviously presenting it nice. Well, the first one we did was very like strict and to the point. And then like we sat with some of our, I guess, like advisors, you could call them. And they're like, you need to make this more vibrant, more lively. You know what I mean? Like you need to... We need to see you, well, well, we're in fashion, so we need to see the designer in your pitch deck, not just figures and words. So yeah, so that was a good piece of advice, I think that definitely really helped. And so I, I kind of let my creativity flow more into the pitch deck as opposed to being super strict. Um, so yeah, so that was the first thing. And then obviously presented to C15 um, and see if they're interested, see if, if the project is something that would interest them. Um, and then from there, obviously, there's the business plan. So it's a little more detailed on a pitch deck. Um, then budgets, forecasting. We, we obviously did an evaluation of our company, both parties, C15 and us. Um, am I going too fast? <laughs> no, no, you're doing good. You're doing um, good. Am I missing anything? So I think those are like the main things. So definitely after the pitch deck stage and the interest, there will be an evaluation of our company. Um, from both parties, obviously. Um, then, yeah, the budget and the forecast, obviously. I mean, all the ideas are fun and great and creativity, but it comes down to like seeing the numbers and yeah. does it make sense financially. So, of course, you sit down with your accountant and you start crunching it and seeing what makes sense and, and where the investment would make sense, you know? Yeah. And I think what's important to say, Sebastian, is you have to know what, what is your ask. I mean, often people come to us, they don't even, they don't know what their ask is and what, and if, if you get X amount of dollars, what is exactly the plan for it? So be very clear on what you want to achieve. And as Sebastian is saying, and you know, even Zamani mentioned, these things don't happen overnight. It takes time. You build it through, you share it with people, you talk to, 
you know, advisors or your 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 friends, family, business people, and and it, it builds. And I mean, the process with the hideout at C15 literally took nine months. It was a child. Like we grew a child. Yes, Amani, sure. Um, I see a hand up. <clears throat> Sorry. Yes, I know it. And, and I think that's a very important point, specifically for the creative sector, which I've been, and I'm happy when someone said, said that, is how you start or you approach your business. And one thing people have seen that we, we grew from a first event where we are 350 people to where we have up to 19, 20,000 people, right? And the reason we were able to facilitate this growth is that is how we started our business the approach we took with our business. We took, we, we, I, mean, I guess because of to a extent of my background, where we took an approach where we weren't just doing it as a hobby, but we see it one day as a business that we'll be able to export, one day we'll as a business we'll be able to accept investment. So as someone said, said having a business plan, keeping good records, all these things are very, very important, even when you're in the creative industry. And sometimes we, take, we, we approach a creative industry as a hobby, so we try, we, we don't think that, okay, just as a person with an agro-process form, um, company would document that somebody says, uh, they say, uh, you have your accountant or you have a business planner. These, these, these things are very important, even for the creative sector. And I can't emphasize that enough because most times one of the biggest inhibitor for us accessing uh, finance, even, even grants, even grants intended for the creative sector, because I'm a channel export at CDB. We've, we've done a lot of grants for the creative sector, so I know this specifically. Even your ability to access grants, more so, and, and then to a lot to, to our next extent, investment is dependent on, 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 on how you treat your business, your approach to business, and your ability to even to just take basic steps to have good employee, good business practice. So that's always my. Our recommendation to any business is to ensure that you will start employing good business practice. So in the future, when they try to approach, for example, a C15, it makes their work a lot easier and your ask a, a much more realistic. Agreed. Agreed with everything. And the thing is, you know, and what I want to ask, because some the creatives tend to be reticent a bit i would use that word um to to let go of control so this is my question to sebastian how did it feel for you to bring uh an investor because obviously you had to give up some of the equity some of your capital um what did that mean for you and and, and what does it mean for you as you go forward um of course, at the beginning there's always a little bit of pain because it's something that you built from nothing so is the classic thing is your little baby or whatever. But honestly, I'm excited to see what the partnership is going to bring to fruition. So I'm not being like on the side of, oh, I let it go, you know, like I'm ex very excited to see what we do together. Yeah. And as you know, you, you made a good point the other day telling me, but wait, you all invested in this company. So you you all want to see the company succeed. So that brings me to, and I learned actually this term in the Bahamas when we were there, cross-pollination. So this is really important for us at C15, like networking our clients, bringing them together. So, you know, Zamani, if you have been a boy and you could get him to wear a THC design at your concert, we win. We win. That's the kind of thing we want to happen more and more, you know, like really linking the different fields. We have people um, in catering and, you know, putting them in contact with people who are doing film and so on. So really trying to marry more and more our clients and, and making sure that we're, we're all supporting one another for this common goal. And what is the objective of C15? It's really taking the creative talent of the Caribbean to the world and this is exactly what the hideout is doing because by opening that flagship store in Paris it's a first in its kind like there was no store like that there's no brand from Trinidad or even most of the Caribbean who could say that they've opened a flagship store in Paris and to have that kind of um 
you know, uh, visibility already when I talk about it, you know, anywhere I go and I talk about, yes, we're investing in this fashion company, they're opening a store in Paris. They're like, oh, wow, you know, this is not opening a store in Miami. This is, you know, this is Europe. This is Paris, the capital of fashion, you know? So we are really taking Caribbean talent to the world. And that is definitely one of our objectives and, and mission statements, actually. And yes, we would love to start having some questions coming in. Sebastian, where do you see um, the hideout in the next six months, year? So the next six months, of course, we'll be opening our flagship store in Paris. Um, we're aiming for December 1st. Um, trying our best to open for that date. It's a very significant date because it's actually my best friend's birthday who co-founded the brand with me, who passed away last year. So that's his birthday. So it's a very, very important date that we're aiming for. Well, that's good. So that's the first, that's in the next three, six months. But um, this year alone, I mean, I, I'll tout for Sebastian. He was in Japan, South Korea. The brand is in South Africa. Um, Italy, Germany already, all these territories, you know, so a lot, lot happening here with the hideout. And, um, you know, we hope, as I said, to see, you know, the the flagship store in Paris is just the start and we're going to have a store in Japan next or somewhere else in the world. So great. Yes, definitely. The, the goal is to obviously make the store in Paris succeed. Um I know we have a lot of work on our hands and I'm worried, but we have to make it succeed. So we have a lot of plans of what we're going to do to make it live. Um, and then, of course, yeah, moving forward would be to open flagship stores in other key fashion markets, for example, Tokyo, Japan, etc. Great. I see a question coming in. Before I answer that, though, I just want to say, because this is important for you all to know also. Um, the money is not just being given just like that. Of course, there are milestones, what we call milestones in the in the industry, where you know X amount of dollars put out as we need in three months or six months. This is what the the milestones or the KPIs, the key performance indicators. So those are things that if we're working with you and investing with you, we discuss together. We are not just going to randomly come up with milestones. We're of course going to discuss them with you and work with you to achieve them. You know, um, very important to say too. We don't want to run your business at all like have enough work i cho i 15 sectors can you imagine that's a lot so i don't want to produce every film and i don't want to run every business i want you all to do it and that's why we're working with some of the best in their fields and let them do the work we are just there to partner and support so yeah i see a question should i should i read it um regina yes you can Okay, so um, would C15 be interested in funding a music artist with building a brand and selling merchandise along with creating albums? I mean, obviously, we would be interested. And, in, you know, again, it depends on what stage of the career that person is at and what they've done so far, um, what the goal is, you know, what the marketability is. So I would say yes, but of course, we have to go more in depth and under better understanding. Um, good evening, everyone. Do you give any consideration to custom gift baskets businesses? I mean, why not? If you have an order, so let me use this as an example so you'll understand the Accelerate product a little bit. For example, one of your big hotels in Bahamas gives you an order. Bahama Ma orders 500 baskets from you. We can advance the funds for, the, for that order once you have a confirmed order in hand with signature from Bahama Ma or whoever, we can help advance the funds for that order to enable you to produce it faster. And, and we've done that with physical products already um, in, in Trinidad. We work closely with, um, I don't know if you all know this brand, My Coco Body. It's a brand of soaps and oils endorsed by Patrice Roberts, who's a soca singer. So um, yeah, so we're quite familiar in that field as well. Um, What's the application deadline? There's no deadline per se. You can apply anytime, you know, once you have your documentation. That's why we use these two examples. You have, the deadline is you at the end of the day. It's you if you have your paperwork and your documentation ready. 
Um, good evening, everyone. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, and I'm accredited sport and exercise scientist. And looking forward to joining with you in the sports science field. Oh, yes. Hi, Marissa. You had reached out to me on LinkedIn. Yes. Well, I look forward to chatting with you and learning more. So sports is a sector that we want to get into um, because, of course, you know, I think our, our, our sporting fraternity or I don't want to use it just fraternity because plenty of women there too. So our sporting world is very not well represented by the financial sector, by sponsors. We often know, see that it's only when somebody wins a race that they get all these sponsors want to, you know, congratulate them. But to get to the competition, nobody was interested. So we kind of want to change that and, and see where we can support and help. So learning about the sector and I'm open to any um, advice and, and thoughts there. Um, is it possible to meet with a representative from BDBC 15 prior to making an application for equity financing? Yes, you can. I, th I, mean, I think you I think you should still send in your basic information. I would let maybe a representative from BDB answer that. Um, question um yes absolutely lorraine we have members of our credit team on the call with us right now and you can set up a meeting even as early as tonight um to meet with a representative to talk about your application right i'll so, put the details in the chat great thanks Simaya. so what are the fields that you, so tourism comes under hospitality first and we know tourism is really big in the bahamas so yes that is a sector um, what determines C15's interest in equity financing? Does the applicant request equity financing or does C15 recommend a specific financing? No, um, basically, you we don't determine the interest. You come to us with a request uh, and we can, I mean, the request could start at, at a level of just, we need funding and then it can move into the equity financing. We kind of like also the model where we start, like how we started with Zamani. And, you know, we've done a couple of operations together. And now if Zamani came and said, well, look, you know, I want to develop, twist it into this, that, that, or I want to have my own um entertainment center in Barbados or something now we could start talking about equity on that level because we've already worked with him so <clears throat> that's a way of um starting to work with us all right so I'll help you read some of the questions yes, thank you because I'm getting out of breath let me drink a little <laughs> okay. so the question is what experience level is required for a founder of a fashion brand I'm not sure what um experience level to apply is that the question to apply? Um, yes. Startup company, have experience. Well, you need, I mean, a start, you need or at least to have some orders, you know, and show that you you have like at least a year or two of you know, work and experience and sales. We need to see some sales. Okay. All right, thanks. So next question. Hi Lorraine. Can you elaborate on syndicated loans and C15's interest in them? Oh gosh, I feel this is a trick question. Um, <laughs> what do you, when you say syndicated loans, explain to me a little bit because I am a creative, I'm not a finance person, so I'm not sure I know what a syndicated loan is. So what I will do is I will unmute the person that has asked that question, yes. Mr. Lou. Good day, Lorraine, how are you? Good, good, Mr. Devo. Brent. Good day, everybody. Uh, yeah, so um, we've had some some interest where uh, individuals could, could see in the C15 goal uh, has a max of 1.5 million. They're perhaps interested in more than 1.5, but they may have garnered interest in their project from another source. Uh, would C15 um, consider syndicating it, uh, covering their max up to 1.5 or some portion um, and and um, work with uh, another uh, equity or or lender to cover the difference? Yes, so definitely. Well, thanks for educating me on what a syndicated loan is. But yes, definitely. We love actually to have other partners in the business that it's comforting one, especially in territories that we're not familiar with. That's why in the Bahamas, we're happy to be working with the Bahamas Development Bank, because it already means this is somebody in the you know, in this in the region or in the country that knows the clients and so on. So yeah, yes to that. <laughs> 
Oh, look, somebody says they want to network with both gentlemen. So maybe we can put the emails in the chat because one, he's a concert event promoter in Bahamas and he launched his first Bahamian themed sneaker line in 2021. So I'm going to share their email address. Actually, Zamani and Bas, could you all type in your email addresses? Thank you. Lorraine, I think it's really interesting. One of the things that I'm seeing is that there's a great opportunity for cross-border partnerships for people in Trinidad and the Barbados to partner with people here in the Bahamas, smaller companies, persons who have done events. And so maybe that's something that as part of our evolving journey of supporting creatives that BDB and maybe C15 can support international networking and international opportunities to exchange ideas and create you know real partnerships that can grow yeah i love that idea I, you know me i'm all about that partnership and yeah and i and the current the thing is that as i keep saying because like when we talk about the film industry and they talk about well trinidad or about we cannot look at the caribbean in isolation island by island we have to look at the caribbean as one and even that extends into North America and Europe and so on. Right now, you know, it's Notting Hill Carnival in UK. All the Caribbean people are flying up there. You know, and next month it's Miami. You know, this is it. We, we have such a, a strength in our numbers that if we come together, that really we would represent a huge market, you know, force. So I really would love us to link more um, in like what can, you know, Bahamas and Trinidad do together and, and so on. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Uh, MD, would you like to chime in before we close the, the session? So um, thank you all for coming today. I, I, I would like to point out something interesting. I, I know uh, the Bohemians listening, you heard sneakers launched in the Bahamas. I know in your mind you're saying, oh man, should have been me. Well, what I want to say is the opportunities in front of you, please uh, take advantage of these opportunities. And um, this won't be the only thing that the Bahamas Development Bank brings to the table. C15 is the first. It is our flagship brokerage program. We're excited to honor that they approved and actually signed the agreement with us. And so please, we have much more to come to you. Please ask your questions, contact us, uh, so maybe, uh, maybe you could put our number in the chat, please, uh, if it's not already there, the, the office numbers. And so persons, you can call in, uh, maybe the uh, email address as well. And so we look forward to seeing as many applications. We have 95 persons in here right now. We want to see as many persons apply with good and viable projects. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you to our guest speakers and to S uh, BDB staff. I appreciate you. And we're so excited to fund as many businesses as possible. All right. Thanks. I have one question from Tanil, so I will unmute her. Yeah, and Sebastian, could you put your email in the chat? Oh, I didn't see it. Good night, everyone. I just had a question regarding whether the government of the Bahamas has considered offering grants to help with the development of the components required for the applications or any other sorts of funding available. Thank you. Well, your BDB could so go that's on. A, that's yeah, a question for us. Okay, MD, yeah, please go ahead. Um, so great question. So when, when you look at the ecosystem of this country, we can't work separately, we have to work together. And one of our partners is the Small Business Development Center. They help craft business plans. And so they, uh, they actually do it with a, uh, there's, what's the word called? Pretty much they cover a portion of the bill. And so you can go to them and they will help you write your plan and potentially a pitch deck as well. So they are great partners uh, to provide that with you. And there's other partners. I mean, um, BAIC does some smaller plans for those in the agriculture field. And uh, the Chamber of Commerce, I think, actually does some plans. But the Small Business Development Center, they really help subsidize the cost of business plans and pitch decks. Great. Thank you. Well, it's very impressive that so many people stayed until the end, really um, heartwarming. And I'm so excited of what the potential is with the Bahamas. You know, such 
incredible um, country and people. So great. Yes. Lorraine, I would just like to say thank you so much for coming, Zamani, Sebastian. I hope that this is not the last time we hear from you. I hope that maybe you can come to the Bahamas and we can meet you in person. Um, this has been great. Um, to the creatives that have come out, um, I hope you know that this is quickly, Ramon, ask your question because it's seven o'clock and we like to keep people's time. So go ahead. <laughs> Where is he? He's right there. He's saying he's he's asked to write a, to ask a quick question. But oh. I just want to say before as we close out oh. that, you know, go ahead, Ramon. Hello. Um, okay. I'm a poet, songwriter, and producer. One quick question. Do you need a business license in order to get put on? Because I've been making music since 2001, but I feel like, like many times creatives and also other people they get put shut down because maybe someone is on a different horizon or a different peak, but just someone coming into an independent, I was wondering that if it's a fair share for them as well. Well, yeah, I mean, yes, I would say yes, a fair share for everybody. But again, it's, um, you know, it, it, it has to, what I want to say is the, we're in the business of money, of making money. So it has to, I mean, unfortunately, it sounds a bit crude, but that is the truth. Like, this is our business. So it has to have marketability, whatever it is. So, okay. Stan, I know we have to end. Um, mm -hmm. Lorraine, we cannot worse than express the amount of work we've put you under since uh, we developed this relationship. And so we really are appreciative to you and your team for taking the time out to come to the Bahamas for the launch in June now uh, on this webinar and bringing the guests as well. I, I think it's magnificent. And so I just speak on behalf of the BDB team specifically and the country of everyone here that we appreciate you. And we really look forward to the investments that are made into the country. And uh, Sumeya, back to you. MD, I think you have said, we have said um, what needs to be said from the BDB side. We've really expressed our commitment to the creative industry, to our creative partners. As you know, BDB has been very committed to this sector for the last, you know, two to three years. We are really and truly figuring out the, the parachute on the way down. It's a new horizon for us, but we are going to continue on this journey with you. Um, and with our partner, C15. So to everyone, I just want to say thank you so much. Have a great night. And please be in touch with us. All right. Bye. As a little bit of, yes, as a little bit of housekeeping, this recording is going to be available on our website. And we're going to share like social media, Instagram, website links for our, for our guests. So thank you all so much. And good night, everybody.